It's weird to think how your model will define what content you make, but if you think about it from the audience's perspective, then it makes sense. For example, why would a half-naked succubus play Fortnite? I mean, you could, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little jarring, but since most people would assume that a VTuber who looks like that would focus more on, you know, roleplay, ASMR, or adulting games, and I can see why that might be a little weird. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, if you're like me, who became a VTuber back in 2020 when VTubing first blew up in the West, then maybe you kind of rushed into this because you were so excited to become a VTuber that you didn't really think about your model concept or your lore or what kind of content you're actually going to make. And then one day after a few months or a few years, you realize that you don't actually like your VTuber model or the content that you're making. So you start to think that maybe I should rebrand, but you don't really know how to go about it or what the right way is. Hmm. Hey, um, I have a topic that has been on my mind. I posted on Twitter, but I have been generally thinking of reaching out and hearing different people's opinions. What is your opinion on rebranding? A VTuber deciding to switch up their name and or concept. Is there a right or wrong way to do it? What are your general thoughts on this? Thank you, Mitsuki, for writing this in the VTubers Discord on the Dream Realm Discord. You know how I mentioned earlier that I've been a VTuber for a long time? Well, in the last three years since I've been a VTuber, I've gone through several rebrands on this channel. Yes, several of them. I've rebranded my concept, my VTuber model, and I've even rebranded my entire YouTube channel several times. And now, in 2024, I'm thinking of going through a rebrand again because I'm not really happy with how people have been perceiving my model or my content. After a couple of successful and a lot of unsuccessful attempts at rebranding and a lot of just frustrating conversations one after another, I have finally have had enough experience to answer this question. What is the right way to rebrand? But before I get into that, let me tell you the wrong ways to go about rebranding and what mistakes I've made when going through my own rebrands on this channel. When I first went through my rebrand on this channel, I had a whole model and lore change. Basically, I redid my entire VTuber concept and started from scratch. I even went from trying to make let's plays and video game highlights, you know, the typical like VTuber and like YouTuber stuff, right? To then making tutorials and now I make lifestyle content in Giz Advice. You know, basically the very low effort, most incredibly lowest tier possible stuff that you'd see in like those self-help books, right? Yeah, that, that's, that's what I do now. Totally. And honestly, it took me three years of just failing, and I mean constantly failing. You know, I was failing to the point where I was like <laughs> almost ready to just give up because like it has just been such a frustrating on journey i have rewritten this script almost 11 times trying to figure out what i wanted to say until today i was just like you know what screw it i'm i'm just gonna say what i just want to say and anyone who has to complain about it and stuff i don't care because i have things i gotta say i kind of realized what i actually want to do as a vtuber believe it or not after all this frustrations and reworking on different scripts and trying to find out the right words that I want to say, I just realized that there's never going to be any right words. Someone will always take something and misconstrue it. Someone will always take something and then take it out of context. Nothing that I will say will ever change it. So it's better for me to just say it and then reflect on it and improve after. I remember seeing this other VTuber who had a childlike model and she rebranded into this lewd tentacle vtuber and while i don't think there's anything wrong with that especially if you want to go through an entire rebrand where you want your model to reflect the content and persona you want to have so i don't have any issues with that but i remember seeing a lot of backlash on twitter when she made her re-debut announcement and people were saying all these nasty things about her and there was okay there was this one account 
who made a bunch of hurtful memes saying, oh, she's just trying to cash grab on a trend and how the only way you can grow is by copying everyone else and being lewd. So that must be the reason why she's doing she can't make good content. And you know what? All right, first of all, Jackie's coming off now, okay? Because, you know, we got to be a little bit more lewd in here since this is the meta now. You have to have massive boing boings, right? You have massive boing boings and you need to... You need to say ada ada all the time and you gotta go ooh and stuff and that <laughs> whatever whatever unhinged stuff that people think that you have to do to, <laughs> to grow <laughs> anyways it was really awful to see and i mean awful like the way people were just bragging on her and like ugh, i just i felt so bad for her because okay first of all Let's pretend like the reason why she rebranded is so she can cash in on the lewd VTuber trend. If that was actually true, then so what? Why do you care? If she actually likes making lewd content and this is something her community supports, which I'll get into in a minute, then it's none of her business with how she decides going on about making her content. It's her channel, it's her content, let her do what she wants. And like, listen, I didn't grow making lewd content, and I get a lot of flack for this because I always say this. And the reason why I say this is because I have seen so many VTubers who fall into the same trap of thinking if they don't make lewd content, if they don't do this, if they don't do what all these other people are doing, then they're never going to grow. And that's not true. There is a lot more valuable things about yourself that you can use. And when I say that, I'm not saying that making lewd content is not valuable. It's very much valuable and it's a valid way to grow. I just don't want people to feel like they have to do it, especially if it's something that they don't enjoy. The way I grew was making tutorials. So I have no idea what it's like being a lewd content creator or how easy it really is because, you know, every time I've tried to make lewd content or, you know, do something like making a sussy joke or trying something lewd in past streams, my chat would literally friend zone me every single time. And they'll tell me, oh, I'm grounded or they'll put me in a corner. Like, what the heck? I am an adult and I can have adult conversations too. <sighs> hmm. But I realized that maybe the reason why I never made lewd content is because that's just not how my audience perceives me. And again, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, I distinctly remember this one viewer who had a complete meltdown in our community discord because they were convinced that one of my old VTuber friends was corrupting me and turning me into this, like, really lewd creator. But the thing is, I've always been kind of lewd. <laughs> also, I can blend normally to watch this. And my tongue jiggles, too. I think that's really cool. <laughs> I don't know. Like, look, I don't say sus things because I'm trying to bait pose. <coughs> Sorry, I need some gamer subs. I say it because that's my sense of humor. I like that kind of stuff, you know, in small doses. A lot of my audience, or well, my viewers, aren't interested in that type of content. And the only reason why I know this now is because my manager Tessa sat my ass down and showed me how my audience and outsiders perceive me solely based on how my model looks. Yeah, I know, it's really freaking annoying. Like, did you know that this model, I, like, did you know that I have booba? Look, I do, they jiggle. Look, 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 see, 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 I bet you didn't even, I bet you didn't even realize that because you're such a baka and you didn't even notice it. I, I do, I do, okay? It's the outfits that I wear, all right? I have certain outfits that look like I don't have booba. I've always have had booba this whole entire time. It's just that's not my main key charm point here that you guys it's just it doesn't matter anyways, okay? So I've I've realized, okay? She explained to me that my VTuber concept is dreamy and it represents my love for daydreaming and nostalgia really well, but there is a disconnect because the art style and the design I chose to represent my concept, you know, because looking at my past models. They all look cutesy and like childlike because that's just 
<laughs> the artist that I chose because screw me for wanting to have a cute model. <laughs> and well, that kind of stuff really matters to an outside audience and to the viewers you're trying to attract. And again, even though like I do have booba, you can't really tell because, well, I'm wearing, I'm literally wearing overalls or well, an overall skirt, I guess you could say, and a long shirt that kind of like pushes them together in a little bit, you know, you're like, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, this is your one moment to look in my chest. I give you the pass. You can look, you got a hall pass. You can look <laughs> uh, anyways. So mind you, I did not plan for it to be that way. Like, did you know holding a plushie makes you look younger? Even if you had big booba VTuber model, holding a plushie signifies innocence and childlike. Like, I, I didn't know that. I literally just wanted to have a plushie of my dog, Momo, at the time to represent her. And yeah, that apparently um makes me look like a child. So I had no idea. So when I realized this, it started to make a lot more sense on why I struggled to grow and why I get so many, and I mean so, so many mean comments because people think I did this on purpose when my intention was to have a cute pastel model and sometimes I have to go on Twitter and stress about posting or making a stupid YouTube video like this knowing that I'm going to be ridiculed because everyone thinks that I'm trying to do this on purpose when I'm not. I just wanted to be cute. Mm. Thank you, Tessa, for explaining to me because my three brain cells would have never realized that something as small as a detail of like, you know, adding makeup to your model can completely change how your audience perceives you. Yes, believe it or not, makeup can make you look older. I've noticed this has been a pretty big trend among other VTubers is adding makeup to their models as well as like certain eye shapes. Like a lot of that, just little nuanced details can really change how everyone perceives your model. So back to my story about that VTuber who rebranded. How did her community respond to this? Well, I'm not saying this to be mean because I wasn't a part of her community, so I don't know the exact details, but I don't think it was positive because after a few months of her using her new model, she ended up scrapping it entirely and going back to her old cutesy model. So like, I don't know, maybe her audience, like, I don't know. So maybe she realized her new model wasn't really a good fit for her or her content, or maybe she did lose a lot of her audience, but I don't know, like, do you think it was a good idea for her to spend all that money to, you know, rebrand only to go back to her old model? Why do you think her audience would respond negatively to that? And how do you think they felt when she decided to go back to her old model? Because like, from my personal experience, when people see a cutesy model, they usually expect either a gremlin or like a wholesome experience from that VTuber. I know, cliche, right? But that it's true. And for sexy models, people are going to expect you to be making adult-themed content. And you know, I think when you look at it from this perspective, then it makes sense why people would want to stop watching that content creator. And it makes a whole lot more sense on why people stopped watching me when I made other videos besides tutorials. Do you think it was reasonable for people to stop watching us? Because, um, personally, if it were me, and I was watching this VTuber, you know, being a gremlin, playing Fortnite one day. I don't know if she actually plays Fortnite, because like I said, I didn't watch her content. But then, you know, I tune in the next day because I don't go on Twitter that much to look at announcements and I only get notified of live streams on my phone. And then all of a sudden, I see that they rebrand into a LooTuber and are making ASMR content now. Then <laughs> I probably would unfollow them or stop watching their channel altogether because even if I was interested in that type of content, that's not why I came in there to watch that particular creator. I don't know if this is actually what happened. This is just kind of how, if I were to insert myself into like a viewer's shoes perspective. And this is something that I also saw with my own content as well. Like the amount of people, whenever I upload anything that wasn't a tutorial, the amount of comments I would get saying, I miss you making tutorials. I wish you would make them more like, hello? I only made like, I don't know, like six tutorials 
and I have over a hundred videos on this channel. Like, please, that's not my entire branding and it never was. But still, like sometimes that's just what happens. As I get older, my interests change and the type of content I wanna watch changes. And because of that, I've, I have stopped watching a lot of different IRL streamers. So to me, I think a lot of this applies to VTubing. I don't want you to think me saying all of this means that you can't rebrand out of fear that your audience will hate it and leave because there is a key difference that makes your rebrand either a success or a learning experience. And I don't want to use the word failure because if you are like me, hearing the word failure gives me anxiety and it puts so much pressure on me to have to make this rebrand work. Otherwise, I'm a failure and I should just give up, which is what literally the three little brain worms that are in my head are always trying to tell me to do. But you know what? That's not true. Those are just my stupid little brain worms trying to eat my third brain cell. And the truth is that you can learn from your failures, which is why I'm calling it a learning experience. <sighs> so I want you to know that there is some truth that rebranding can make some of your viewers leave. And you should expect that you might have to rebuild your entire audience from scratch. And you aren't alone in this because this happens to every content creator. It happened to me. It's happened to literally just, just anyone. Anyone who you've ever seen try to rebrand. It just, it happens. It is just a thing. Whenever they go through a rebrand, it's just, that's just how it is. Like I said earlier, I lost people when I would upload something that wasn't a tutorial and it would really upset me. And I mean, it would really upset me because it was never my intention to be just a tutorial channel or I don't know, like this fake kind of self-help channel, which I'm still not really sure where that is. I, I don't really know where people are getting that from considering I mostly upload video game content on here. <laughs> but the key difference between that and this situation is expectations. Something that I didn't mention earlier about this story is that this VTuber got really upset at both her audience and, you know, the outsiders on Twitter for not being more supportive. Like, I remember her tweeting out something along the lines of how VTubing is her job and how she needs to make money and how she wishes that people would be more supportive of her decision to make content that better suits her and her needs to continue making content as a VTuber. I'm paraphrasing most of that because I don't want to go searching for that tweet because a lot of people get upset when you show a public tweet in a YouTube video and rightfully so. No one wants to like really be showing that kind of stuff as I've learned over time. So I don't really want to do that. And it's not important because the important message I got from that entire situation was that she wanted to grow. And her logic, from my understanding, was that in order to grow, she needs more eyeballs on her. And the best way to do that would be to go to into like this rebrand, into this different model. And you know what? It worked. But, 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 but. She didn't get the kind of attention she was expecting. And like I said, those memes, they, they were really mean, you guys. Like they, they were not good. So she wasn't getting the kind of attention that she was expecting. And there was some sort of, disconnect between her and her audience after that because from what I had seen and well looking at her twitch metrics I kind of saw a, a pretty big decline in viewership which is a pretty big indicator that they're not resonating with your content anymore and this also explains why I also felt so disconnected with my own content on this channel and why I kept just throwing stuff at the wall until something would stick. Like I have made so many different types of content on this channel and I and you might not realize that, but if you actually look at my channel, I have made let's plays. I have like full blown let's plays. I have made uh, gaming highlights. I have made parodies, flat out satirical parodies on this channel. I've made tutorials. I've given like some listicle advice tips. I've also have made some commentary. I've done some drama. I've done some news coverage. I've done just like pure highlights and zoomer edits. I have tried a lot of different stuff on this channel to see what would stick. 
Of course, the tutorials will always forever stick. It is pure evergreen content. People will always be searching how to do like VTuber stuff or anything that's like a how-to. That is pure evergreen. But I still wanted to try making other types of content like this video here where I'm talking. Some people might say that, oh, this is just like lifestyle advice, whatever, sure. But I see it as a conversation between you and me because, well, if it were me, I wish someone would have this conversation with me since people in our Discord are talking about this. Like, I think for the past several weeks, people have been asking about rebranding. So that tells me that a lot of people are thinking about rebranding and I understand why. Even I'm thinking about it. After four years now, like, I'm still thinking about doing this. And I'm probably going to. The reason why I want to talk about that situation with that other VTuber is because I see a lot of myself in her since... I am currently struggling with my own concept and the type of content I want to make on this channel. This is the reason why I felt disconnected for a while. And every time I tried to throw something different at the YouTube algorithm, <laughs> it either didn't perform well or I got harassed for it. Because, you know, the problem is, is that when you're small and first starting out as a VTuber, you have the luxury, okay? Yeah, that's right. You have the luxury of trying out all kinds of different content you can make. That means you can make as many mistakes as you want because guess what? No one's watching you. Or, you know, if you do have like an audience, they're not gonna remember it by that time. But when you already have an established audience because, you know, one of your clips popped off or like this video went viral, if you're still in the process of finding yourself, then you have a lot more pressure to keep making similar content that popped off in that one clip or video. That's what they mean by you keep throwing stuff at the wall until something sticks and then you keep remaking it over and over again. And it's tempting to do that because you're getting views from it and nothing else is working. There is such a double-edged sword doing that. Imagine forcing yourself into a niche making content that you realize you don't even enjoy making and you're still being forced to make it all because a 30 second clip of you went viral. Like, what would you do? If you were me, you would keep making the same stuff until then you realize like, well, I hate this. And then you don't even want to upload a at all anymore. And that's not fun. Like to me, that's really demotivating. And I feel bad. Like, I, I feel bad seeing someone else trying to take a step in a different direction. Like this other VTuber that I was talking about. You know, she's trying to better herself. She's trying to mm, get this career, like, moving up. And seeing it result in a lot of pushback and her being forced back into the same mold everyone put her in. Like, I don't know, maybe she realized that this model really wasn't for her. But she spent a lot of money on this model. Like, rebranding is not cheap. Unless if you're doing everything yourself or you're getting like a bunch of like presets or anything like that, it's not cheap and it takes a lot of time. So imagine like going through that entire like struggle, this this whole effort to do that just to go back to your model because you just kept getting so much shit for it. It's not a good feeling. It makes me feel bad because I think rebranding should be a good thing, especially if it's something that you need to do in order to grow and become successful. And like... If it were me, which I mean, it kind of was for a while and it kind of still is. I feel as a content creator who really wants to make this VTubing thing work, there is so much pressure with leaving a good first impression with the, you know, your target audience, people on Twitter. I don't know, your mom, like there is so much pressure to leave a good first impression. Like for me, I realized that I like helping people. I like giving advice and little bits of information or knowledge that I have learned if I know it'll help someone. It's not like I just say things just to say things. If I literally spend all this time researching stuff that I think would be really useful to someone else because I never got any help doing VTubing or really anything in life. No one has ever given me any handouts. I dedicate a lot of my life, like hours and hours of my time finding useful information that I think could actually help someone. And if that information has to be just very kind words to cheer someone up, like to motivate them, we all have bad days, right? 
I wish someone would say something nice to me instead of telling me all these really hateful stuff I have to see all the time. I wish I had that. I also wish that I had someone who would show me a much faster way to set up my model or to even make my model. Like, what if I can't afford it? Or just to do something that I spent hours on realizing there's a 10 second shortcut, which yes, I have seen and experienced that, okay? It's very annoying, but I never had anyone to help me and I still don't. Like I still have to do everything myself and I think about that a lot and I think about how frustrating that is. And so I want to help other people who maybe like you, for example, who would love to have someone help them if it could save them time and just, you know, make them feel better and make them want to do something with their life instead of just like sitting here confused. Because that's what I spend most of my time doing is being confused and upset. So I don't want other people to feel that way either. But, you know, I made the mistake of only making tutorials for a while on this channel because I thought that was how I could build a community and meet people who have similar interests as me, but it didn't. Instead, what I got was a lot of people who would get upset at me if I didn't make more tutorials. And I even got a lot of haters and stalkers who constantly harass me telling me all the things I'm doing wrong on my channel and how my content is low effort and how I'm just doing these awful attempts at just hurting people. And you know, it feels terrible. It's something that I still have to constantly deal with all the time. Because, you know, how would you feel if you started making content and suddenly you have a bunch of outsiders telling you what you can and can't do with your content? Meanwhile, your actual community members are telling you to make the content you enjoy. But then when you make the content that you enjoy, suddenly everyone in your community isn't watching it. It's hard to ignore the trolls and do what's best for you as a creator when it feels like no one is supporting you. I want to feel confident about rebranding. Instead of being afraid and having constant anxiety because that's just going to make me feel like a disappointment and it would probably discourage me to the point where I'd want to stop making content as a VTuber and just graduate altogether. And you know something? That's what this other VTuber ended up doing. I don't know the real reason why she decided to graduate. This was a very recent announcement. I'm actually like adding this into the video when I had made this script prior, but she recently announced a graduation. From what I can see from the comments, it looks like her friends are really happy for her. So maybe she's gonna join an agency or something. I don't know, that would be amazing. That'd actually be really amazing if she joins an agency, like that'd be really cool. Point of the matter is like, she did decide to graduate. And that very well could have been me too. And so if you're like me and you're feeling very similar to the things that I've been saying, you might be wondering, how do you prevent this from happening and rebrand very successfully? Like how do you have a successful rebrand? The first step is being honest with yourself. What is the real reason why you want to rebrand? Is it really because you don't like your model because if it is then well the answer is obvious silly you should rebrand because you know there's no point in making content when you're not happy don't be like me okay don't force yourself to make content that wasn't making you happy if your model's not making you happy you should rebrand it Yes, you will lose people, yes. But you know what? You will also gain people who do like the new you because it's you. When you're not happy and when you're making content that you're not happy with, your audience will see that. And they will also see when you are happy and when you do like the new direction that you're going with, they will support that. And you know what? The second step for this is being honest with your audience because at the end of the day, these are the people who are choosing to support you. If VTubing is just a hobby for you, and you know, you're only doing this to make friends, then you can do whatever you want because you're not worried about growth or making money. Not like there's anything wrong with that. None of this advice will really matter to you because you're here to socialize and there's nothing wrong with that. So if you wanna rebrand, go for it. Like you, nothing is stopping you but you. However, 
If this is your job and VTubing is the career path that you've chosen, then you need to understand what kind of audience you want to attract. And when I say that, I'm talking about the target audience, like the people who you are imagining in your head that are watching you. As I'm talking to you right now, I have like an image of what I think you look like, how I think you act, you know, your personality, like things that you do for your hobbies. I have some kind of an idea. I'm not fully like 100% sure, but I have like some kind of idea, right? Cause you know, I'm literally in a screen, okay? Like I can't see everything about you. I can only see your browser history, okay? Like I can't fully see everything. But anyways, it's not important. My point I'm trying to make is you need to understand what kind of audience you want to attract because that is going to decide what kind of content you should make. It's also going to decide how your model should look and it, it can even decide your entire branding. Whatever audience you want to attract, whatever community you want to create or whatever friendships you want to form, that is all going to shape and be the deciding factors on what you should go about for your content. Also, a bonus tip that I haven't tried yet, but I'm going to because, you know, I'm still, I'm going to be going through a rebrand is that you should involve your community with your rebrand. Yes, 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 that, and you know what? If you're watching this too, that means you're involved in my rebrand too. I am planning on having multiple streams where I ask my Boba Club members on what they'd like to see for future content or character concepts and outfit designs. Because there's a lot about like my concept that I, I would really like to improve more on. And it sounds like I said I called myself a moron. <laughs> no, I, I want to, there's things that I want to improve. And I want to have, you know, either you or the rest of my Boba Club members to give me feedback and kind of like help me out with it on my whole like rebrand. Personally, I really like being asked for feedback on things like that because I don't know, it makes me feel good knowing that I had a part in something. Like literally, when I see people spam in like Twitch chat and stuff being like, I was there, I was there, I, I just, I wanna be there too. Like, I wanna be there, I wanna be there. And that's for my opinions too, my opinions matter. And just, mm, it makes me feel really good knowing I had a part in something, especially if it helps my Oshi feel good. I feel good. So if you have any more questions on rebranding, then leave me a comment because I plan on making a guide with PM Chan on how to rebrand successfully without losing your entire audience. Also, is anyone in the Boba Club thinking about rebranding? You know, if any Boba Club members are watching this, if so, let me know because I'd love to read your thoughts about it. And well, for you as well. Do you think this is an interesting topic that we should explore more in? Or do you have any questions or advice for it? Because this is something I want to explore more in the future. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you for watching. And remember, everything reminds you of something. Bye! Seriously, imagine if I had just rebranded to like a big goth titty mom. <laughs>